Okay, everybody. The recording, it says, is in progress. And here we are. We're live on the Facebook. So we got it. Uh, uh, got it. Okay, there we go. And uh, I'm going to change a few things here just to make sure we're okay and up and running. Yes, we are. I always like to also check the feed to make sure that uh, we're going through on, uh, on Facebook so that all you people who want to watch us on Facebook, all three of you, I mean, we get a lot of people who watch this after the fact, uh, but um, look, there's nobody watching it right now on Facebook, but we have a lot of people who watch it after the fact, and uh, it's a considerable amount of people, so we're very happy with that. Anyway, oh, God, I'm uh, just trying to stay awake here. Uh, had a had a long night's sleep. I got nine hours sleep. I don't know why. But I did. And I think it's time for us to go adding. Oh, boy, we got a lot of people waiting now. So I better admit them all. Otherwise, they'll get very pissed off at me. Here we go. Oh, wow. Ton of them. Wow. First of all, we got Marjorie. Hello, Marjorie. Hello, Alex. And on the other side, there's uh, there's Mandy, ladies and gentlemen. Hard at work. Hard at work, Mandy. Uh, she likes to be hard at work. And then there's Rick Sheckman. Hello, Shecky. Hello, Ben. How are you? And uh, we got uh, Mike up there in uh, Canada. And, Hello, how you doing? Yeah, and we got, um, uh, let's see here. I got to admit, Charlie Wallace here. Uh, we got Edward Berger. Hi, Edward. That's right. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh my God. What a voice. Hello there, Len LaFrisco. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Good. Got the usual suspects here. Steve Bender is calling. He's from downtown. Uh, and uh, Jeff Stein, he's from way uptown in Connecticut. And they're there. Yeah, and then Scott Boddicker's way out there in Texas, and so is Charlie Wallace. Uh, so we have two people calling from Texas today. Uh, boy, this is a big bunch of people to start. This is, uh, what, 11 people we're starting off with, including me? Uh, well, how's everybody been? Good. Fantastic. Good. Wait a minute. Somebody said fantastic. Let's find <laughs> out why it's so <laughs> Why it's so fantastic when the rest of us are just okay. All right, Mike. Okay, so I just shot uh, my third episode of the Letterman podcast, and actually have a have a have a lesson or have a message. Uh, Alex, I'm supposed to tell you that Eddie Brill says hi. He hopes you're well. Yeah. And he loves you, Shecky. Same thing. Lots of love to you too. But when he found out about the Alex Bennett connection, he started talking about San Francisco and uh, all sorts of stuff. So mm -hmm. I just literally finished with him and came on here. I Eddie gave him Brill. The link, Ed, but Eddie Brill. Busy. Didn't he get fired from the Letterman show? He left the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He uh, he he talked a lot about San Francisco and the love he has for you for uh, for you helping him. Well, I like I like Mr. Brill myself. So yeah. Uh, so he uh, says hi. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm excited. Um, so anyway, of course, it's not an official Letterman podcast because you don't have the blessing of. Mr. Letterman himself. Uh, not as of yet, no, but uh, the jury's still out. You never know. You never know what might happen. Yeah, yeah. I think knowing knowing Letterman, you got a fat chance, okay? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't expect <laughs> it to ever happen. Uh, I definitely don't expect it to ever happen, but I like the idea. It feels a little punk rock um, doing it, and uh, the guests that we have on are certainly – uh, close enough to the show that uh, it, while it's not official, it's definitely intriguing for people who enjoy, would consider themselves enthusiasts of the show. Uh huh. Okay. All right. You have a lot of listeners to it. Oh, not yet. I think we've got like a hundred views on the first episode so oh, far, but it's well, brand that, new, right? That, that's ten. That's ten times more than I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're on our way then. Yeah. 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 It's uh, you know, yesterday Marjorie and I were took a walk out to the park, which, by the way, out to the mirror. Beautiful day yesterday, right, Marjorie? Yeah. And, and I, I, I was having trouble walking. It's just terrible. But anyway, so we sit down. 
Here we go. And we start doing a video. (laughs) What do you mean? What do you mean, here we go? What was that snide remark on the part of the woman who supposedly loves me? You had trouble walking? Yes. Anyway, we we sit. No, here we go. We sat down and we did like a video on on Facebook, right? A little Facebook video. Mm -hmm. So far, it's got over 350 views. (laughs) You know, what you know, what do I have to what do I have to do? I did one last week where I just talked and it's got 600 already. You know, it was nothing. So anyway, and this does very well on Facebook. I think that maybe I got to do more on Facebook. Here comes Vernon Nunn. Now we're up to 12 people. Wow. There's a woman who uh, wrote me who says she loves this show and she just hopes that because I, I, I kind of admit all the people that I'm going to let some of the people on from the night show that she doesn't no like. Way. <laughs> <laughs> no she way. She doesn't like. <laughs> this guy named Alan, but I already told Alan, you're not welcome, you know. So she was all worried about that. Oh, it's going to change the whole tone of the show because you've changed your wording there. And Don't worry. You know, I can admit who I want to admit. And these people get immediate admission to this, to this esteemed crowd. So, so this well, is not happening. I guess not, we're grandfathered in, huh? Yeah. yeah you're, <laughs> Definitely, in my case, grandfather. Uh, hey, mine too. I got a granddaughter. Y- yeah. Oh, yeah. You do have a granddaughter, don't you? How old mm-hmm. are you, Mike? I am forty-six years old. Wow, you're wow. rather young to be a grandfather. Yes, mm-hmm. it's through the miracles of modern family that it happened that way. But uh, but she is my 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 everything in my life. I love her more than well, certainly more well, than any of you. Um, I, I love her very much. <laughs> Wow. Probably more than your own children, because your own children like, you know, shit in your pants and things like that. What? Aww. Yeah. Oh, see, because okay. that one, he, what happens is when grandpa is through doting with the kid, you can go home and not yes. have to deal with that kid. Yes. Do so you only absolutely get the, it, it, the She's, great thing about being a grandfather is you get all the all the benefits that you got when you were, you know. Yeah. Uh, she slept over at our house at least one night a week since she was two weeks old. And oh. uh, um, like, so we're best friends. Like we know each other so, so, so well. She's just amazing. I, she starts MMA next week. I'm excited about that. And my job is wait, to wait, never wait, say wait, no wait, to her. Wait, wait, wait. MMA is mixed martial arts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you yes. love this kid and you want to see her get the crap beaten out of her? Twice a week, every week, starting as soon as we get back from uh, C- uh, Cali, Alex. Absolutely. <clears throat> She's uh the same guy who trained Rory McDonald and Sarah, Sarah Cheesecake Morris from the UFC is going to train my granddaughter. Wait, Ain't no I, one pressuring her into prom sex. Not going to happen. Wait, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> hold on a second. Hold on a second. How old is this kid? She's four. She just turned four yesterday. She just turned four, and you've got yeah. her doing mixed martial arts. Absolutely. This makes no goddamn sense. I'll send you some video. It's going to be awesome. Alex, Alex haven't what? you ever... You apparently don't live in the suburbs there's like a karate studio on every corner people have their really? kids karate lessons when they're little bitty really yep. yeah did you send your kids to karate lessons my she was not that young but my older daughter did taekwondo really she said this will look good on my college applications <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> it's also very good for fitness Yes. Yeah. Well, it's good for fitness. I mean, we're, we're, we're not denying that, but mixed martial arts is like they're kicking each other in the face. Yeah. yeah. And jujitsu oh, and striking and whole nine yards. You, you seem excited about that. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Are you kidding me? Uh, uh, a UFC trainer is going to be training my granddaughter. I'm so excited. She's going to, oh, it's going to be great. Okay. I teach a kickboxing class in my fitness studio. Do you really? <laughs> no, he's going to fool around with you. <laughs> I, I better send you that money for that beer I, you bought me. Mike, 
my my da- my daughter did karate when she was little, and Susan, my wife, got so into taking her there and watching it that Susan stayed with it, and Susan's a senpai now. She's a second degree black belt. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. Well, I oh, think that it's probably pretty good exercise. Huh. Yes. You know, I mean, it it's um, uh, but still, I you know, I wonder why you would want a four year old. Take protection, you. Alex. Protection. Well, no, mm-hmm. karate is one thing. If you're t- taking a little kid and you say, "Okay, we'll teach you some karate moves and things like that," that's cute, okay. But mixed martial arts is a little more severe. This is like saying, you know, she's going to join the World Wrestling Federation <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> one can only hope, Alex. Yeah, um, I, I, I love that. <laughs> I love that. It looks like you're you're just in it for the free tickets, aren't you? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Charlie, Scott, yes, how's everything down deep in the heart? Hey, you know what you did in Texas? It's very good. Oh, they just did good. They just uh, 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 a court just said they can't execute the grandma. Or the oh, mother. thank God. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I didn't see that. That's great. There's this mother who uh, was accused of killing her child. I think that's what the story is. Yeah, it fell and, down the steps. And, and they, they in their you know interrogation of her yes did one of those kind of things where she admitted to it even though she didn't do it she i think she admitted to spanking the child in the past or something like that oh you're abuser yeah yeah Yeah. oh jail Uh, our other kids all said said that she never spanked them never hit them never never abused them at all but she she taught uh, them mixed martial arts (laughs) yeah (laughs) You guys haven't seen John Oliver's latest episode. He talked about he talked about this company that all police forces uh, take training from about how to interrogate people yeah. and to evoke confession. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. The idea is to get the confession, whether they did it or not. Just get the confession. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and anyway, company, that's how this company makes all their money. It's wow. by, by training all these police officers how to pull confessions out of people even if they didn't do it yeah they talked about that on john did you say they talked about that on john oliver vernon well he did a whole yeah. thing on this yeah. woman on this particular woman oh, okay. uh it's it's uh but i'm i'm happy that they're not going to execute her but uh she's been on oh. death row for how long yeah but 17 it's years something like that 17 years on death row or as they like to call it in texas sleep away camp <laughs> <laughs> No, we're on our statistics. We got to kill somebody every 24 hours. Or Come on. <laughs> and speaking Texas. of Republican bullshit, did you guys see that Kentucky was the first state in the union to totally ban all abortions? Yep. Yeah. Oh, really? Boy. Wow. Had they, passed the law, they passed a law that said that in order to perform an abortion, there's only two clinics now that, that were, were licensed to do it. Yeah. And they're both in Louisville. And in order to do that, you had to fill out all these forms and submit them to the state. And these doctors that were going to do the abortions had to register with the state. There was just one little problem. The registry doesn't exist and the forms don't exist. Oh. And the governor oh. vetoed it's a felony. it. They said 10 years in prison. Well, we're getting governor, a little we're getting a little vetoed. we're getting a little over political here. The governor yeah. vetoed it, and the and the legislature overrode it. But luckily, three days later, a federal judge put a put a stay on it. Yeah, put a temporary temporary restraining order, so they can't. Let it get up to the Supreme Court. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Anyway, anyway, that's all they want. That's all what they want. Yes. Yeah. To get on to a happier topic, <laughs> I've got a I've got a question for you. You could solve homelessness and hunger or by Twitter. Which do you want to do? <laughs> 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 Isn't that was that a question that was asked of who of of, of uh, Ted Cruz? No. That if you could do away with hunger, or you could do uh, you, if you could do away with all hunger, would you blow me or something like? Yeah. That? yeah. And <laughs> and Cruz. what 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 was Cruz's answer to that? I can't. Really, I think he just laughed it off. If I yeah. remember, I'll, I'll blow you, but fuck the hungry people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, it's funny you should bring that up because that was my next little topic. It just turned out <laughs> just like within the hour, uh, Elon Musk has purchased Twitter. 
Oh, he did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like a Forty-four yeah. billion. Forty-four oh, billion. billion. And the only thing I've got to say to him is, wow. why it isn't worth that much? Just, yeah. You know, how does yeah. Twitter, of all the social, you know, media, is the one that makes the least money? Because it really doesn't doesn't have all these other things going for it, like right. Facebook and Google and things like that, you know. Um, and uh, but anyway, he bought it, so you know. It seems like there's less ability to monetize that one. You know, uh, that one seems tough. Yeah. Well, he's maybe thinking, he's, done. He, he's thinking maybe of turning it into a subscription model. Yeah, yeah. Good luck with be, that. There'll be That's nine people on Nine there. people, yeah. exactly. It'll be, it'll be like Discovery Plus or whatever that thing. CNN yeah. Plus. <laughs> CNN, CNN Plus. Plus. Boy, I wish I got that lifetime subscription rate for three weeks. <laughs> it, it listen, listen, we've looked at the ratings and no one's watching CNN. Why don't we start CNN Plus? Yeah. <laughs> and charge people for it. <laughs> Didn't Rupert Murdoch buy MySpace? That worked out real well. <laughs> you remember that? You remember him that? Tom are, him and Tom are the only ones left on there, I think. <laughs> is MySpace still around at all? It is. It, <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I think it's very specialized it, now. It, it, it's it's totally a, a group of people that you know like weird music or something. I don't know. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Remember when MySpace was everything? That was the social media outlet. Sure. And they got upstaged by Facebook, I think it was. <laughs> very much so. Yeah. And then, then Twitter came along. Yeah. Yeah. And MySpace then Instagram and the other one, whatever, um, TikTok. Oh. TikTok. Instagram got bought by Facebook, though. Yeah. Right. Uh, yes. Yes. I, mean, I think the Twitter thing, I know you don't want to get political, but it has huge implications, right? Because he's going to put Trump back on there. And I said great. that to Alex. Absolutely. That's, uh, yeah, that's really going to help. I, I mean, I think Trump's going to be the next president, unfortunately, but I think this will help him for sure. Well, well I don't think that I, I don't think it, that's his intention. Okay. Yes, it is, Alex. Well, wait a minute. I'm not. I, I'm not in his mind, and neither are you, Marjorie. You know. Well, but, but I don't think that you know that's the reason he bought it. I don't. To begin with, I don't think he's a fan of Trump because Trump's had nothing but nasty things to say about him in tweets. What he believes is that that should be an unfettered, open forum. Yeah. You know, and 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 that's his reasoning. That he feels that the idea of a uncensored open forum is valuable. That's that's how he puts it. I don't know. He'll make all the money he spent on the sale back in tax breaks if Trump is elected. Well, listen to this. Listen to this. He also has said that he's going to make the algorithms of Twitter open source, which means everybody will have access to their to their to their algorithms. Uh, and, uh, you know, everybody always yells that open source is sometimes the best thing because it's the most transparent, but anyway, you know, we'll have to wait and see. It's like it, unregulated capitalism though, isn't it, Alex? Unregulated capitalism. What do you mean? In what, what respect? Well, his, his idea of Twitter being an open forum without any censorship, is like unregulated capitalism. I mean, there's, there's no controls. In other words, uh, you know, dog eat, dog eat dog and, and the survival of the fittest. Well, that's, you see, that's I, the I, problem we have in this country is there's too much bullshit going on on social media. And that's what's separating our country. Well, and, but the question is, can social media wind up over censoring itself? You know, I don't care. I hope they do. Well, I'm not on social media. There's got to be I some... canceled my Facebook and I just stopped using Twitter. <laughs> Well, I don't. I, I, I have a Twitter account, but I don't use it. And so far, he's going to be back. He's going to be back on Twitter. You watch. Oh, that would be the worst. Oh, thing a Trump. Ever. A Trump will be back on Twitter. There's no question about it. Seriously. But I don't think it's because I don't think he spent forty-four billion dollars to allow Trump to have a Twitter account. No. Yeah, but what about that company that Trump started to be the other version of Truth Twitter? Social? The Truth yeah. Social. Right? <laughs> that didn't do too well. No, but but Musk does hate, you know, as do most of us, the woke BS. Yes. But 
you know, I think he sees the return of Trump and the return of these people. And his, his version of free speech is to fight, you know, some some of that, which is not going to you know work out well for the country. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, it's going to be interesting to see what he does about Trump. He has made a statement that he certainly would not let anybody break the law on Twitter. You know, the law of, of the various countries that Twitter is in. Uh, so, uh, it, it'll, it, we'll have to wait and see. I just don't know why anyone would spend $44 billion on Twitter. Because when you got $350 trillion, right. it's like spending 10 bucks. Right. And this is yeah. a joke for the people in the Bay Area. Is anybody here from the Bay Area? Not really. Yeah, I mean, that is. Right. Yeah, you Len LaFrisco. It's an awfully high price to pay for the furniture mart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, yeah. That's or, the or building the, Twitter is in now. I used to do my radio show out of that building. Oh, did you really? Oh, wow. We were on what, the bottom what, floor. Yeah, we, where pigeons pooped in our offices. On Ninth, is that on Ninth Street? Yeah, on Ninth Street. Yeah, I, 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 I used to come over there and see you every once. Yeah, well, yeah. that 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 was that's what uh, Twitter is now. Oh, I'll be damned. <laughs> yeah. Great. So anyway, uh, but you know, well, you know, Obama said that he's uh, he's. You're starting a crusade to kind of re, re, rein in social yeah. media, saying that it's had an unhealthy effect on our discourse in this country. And I, I would agree with him on that. You know, how's it going to happen though? Well, people will hmm? poo him just like they poo pooed Michelle when she was first lady. You yeah. know, when she get kids to eat healthy, people were like, how dare she try to get our kids to eat healthy? <laughs> we want to do, you know, it's like. Yeah. They're all into communists. Censoring us. Yeah, right. I'm not. You can't censor the what I eat. No, she was just saying we want you to eat healthy. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, But uh, you know, I mean, I just uh, the problem is these things never existed in the past. Now they do exist, and the question is, what amount of evil are they causing? You know, and how do we handle it? I don't think the regulations will ever come to pass, but I think they should be regulated like any other media outlet. Well, my question is, see, there's a thing that we used to have in, uh, where was it? Was it in public access when I was working public access television? Uh, the, oh, uh, that, oh, yeah, that uh, there was a thing called, and I'm trying to remember the term now for it, uh, but it, it, it relieve certain companies of a responsibility. For instance, the phone company is not responsible for the calls you make, right? right? Because if they were, then they'd be responsible for anybody that made a call, you know, trying to create some kind of plot to overthrow the government, but they can't control everybody that uses the phone. It's called a status. Uh, what do you call it? Status. Uh, but it, it literally gives them no responsibility for the people who use their system. Yes. You know, and so the question is, should people like Twitter, Facebook, and so on, common carrier status, that's the word. Mm. I'm looking for. Uh, should people like, like these social media outlets have common carrier status or not have common carrier status? And if they have common carrier status, then anything anybody wants to publish on their on their particular platform, uh, they are not responsible for what they say. Well, it's, di- it's different with the phone company because you're usually just talking to one person. Now you're talking to millions, you know, so if you put something out there, it can conceivably, you know, go out there. Over, go over. Well, they, oh, they gave common carrier status, I think, to the cable company is who got it. Yeah, that. that would make sense. Yeah. Trump will be back on. You watch it. And oh, well, let's not, please, you know, we go through a whole hour of the show without that name being. Yeah, you brought yeah. it up. Huh? I didn't bring it up. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Are we getting hey, into the I, family? I, I, I have an icebreaker uh, new topic that we can easily move on to. Yeah. I have a little inside information. Yeah. A, a birdie told me that you and Shecky both watched the new Batman movie and really liked it. I did. I asked well, you about it, Shecky. I don't think you would want. No, we haven't it. talked about it yet. Last time okay. I talked to you, did you like it? Yeah. Yeah. I think I, it would have been better to three one-hour TV shows, maybe. Yeah, and Marjorie an felt, felt something that our movie reviewer Michael Snyder said: the last third of the picture was not very good. It was, it, well, it was my to get an editor and snip, snip, snip. Yeah. 
But I mean, I think the first two thirds of that picture was terrific. I really liked it because it was more a detective drama than it was a, uh, 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 you know, high action picture. I think they had one. Well, he's he, the Batmobile's in it for what, a minute? Something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's riding motorcycles instead. So it's I don't want to call it down. But it's not like this, hey, look at what we've got. We've got this souped up car. You know, we have, you know. Well, I think it went back to the Batman a lot of us love, and that is the Batman who really is just a guy who works out a lot, you know, and has that ability. And he can afford to buy some gadgets because he's so rich. And that's it. He's like you and me, only we don't have the muscles and we don't have the money. Well, yeah, he's not a super. We don't have the armor that'll withstand machine guns. Right, right. He's a rich guy. He's not. He's also the world's greatest detective. You know what was it? I think in one of the uh, pictures that what's his name did the actor none of us can stand. Uh, (laughs) uh, Christian Bale. No, no, no. Matt (laughs) Matt Damon's friend Ben Affleck. In one of the Affleck movies, I think it was maybe the Zach, maybe it was the Zack Snyder version or something. But anyway. Somebody says, what's your superpower? He says to Bruce Wayne, he says, I'm rich. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was good. Yeah. But uh, is he maybe following the Johnny Depp trial? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes. Yes. I hate to admit it, but yes, I one day I got stuck. Oh, by the way. You can't help but they talk about it nonstop on the internet. Can't help but follow it. Well, well I mean, it's just. It's two rather disgusting people fighting each other. I couldn't yeah. care less. He just pooped in his bed. <laughs> he she pooped in his <laughs> bed. <laughs> I beat her too. She yeah. poop in the bed. Well, maybe he's just good at sex. I don't know, you know. But, uh, um, uh, Get out of it. I found something. You know, my, it, YouTube has become an endless source of entertainment for me. I, whenever I have nothing else to watch, I go over to YouTube and I just oh, yeah. do one thing to another. I don't want to watch that, but I want to watch that. Uh, 10 reasons why Johnny Depp shouldn't have gone out with Amber Heard. You know, mm-hmm. it's like that. Right? What, what's the thing that we were watching about? Oh, wait, that's that what I'm going to tell them. Systems? I'm going to tell them I found the best. Okay. And it's this Alex, guy Alex, called, Alex, the one where they get into. Yeah, the, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell them that. Oh, that's what I was okay. leading up to. Okay. Okay. Uh, Please don't harsh my mellow. Uh, No, what happened was I found this new thing and it's called scammer. I can't remember the last name of it, but just put in the word scammer. You'll find him. Okay. This guy goes online to scammers who like call the people who call you and go, you know, we want this and we want that. And sometimes they then try and extract money from you by having you sign on to your browser. They're pulling from Amazon. Yeah, whatever. And he calls them and he knows where they are. He also knows how they do it. So when they ask him to like do something so they can see his screen. Yeah, he automatically knows how to see their screen. He can look at he can look at their webcams. And yes, the yeah. webcam, everything. And while they're talking to him, he's sitting there erasing everything on their hard drive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You yeah. know, and you just saw there, and you go, yay! It, it's, it's like he, scammer payback. Scammer payback. That's what it's called. I'm writing this down. I need some entertainment. Yeah. Some of them are delicious. Okay. Some of them are a little boring, but some of them are, are absolutely delicious. There's this guy. I get the guy, the guy with the blue hair. His blue hair and red in his hair. Yeah. And he, he obviously, I found out also, they, he puts up his bank statement, you know, like from Bank of America up on the screen so they can see that. All right. But what it is, is he has actually spoofed a Bank of America account <laughs> that is up there and he controls it. So what they're looking at is really a phony account. But mm-hmm. they all suddenly see that their, you know, their five thousand dollars winds up uh, in his account or whatever. Uh, uh, and it's, it's, very, it's, very, it's, it's a lot of fun. Payback. Sc- sc- scammer payback. And uh, he uh, one 
episode of that. You ready for this? Hold on to your seats. You're going to poop your pants. Okay. <laughs> One episode that I saw had 16 million views. Wow. wow. So apparently people like myself enjoy watching this because we so hate these people. Yeah. They have so you know, ruined our lives. And these are all coming from like India. And he tells them exactly where they are in India. Yeah. Yeah. He tells them what color shirt they got on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and while he's talking to them, he's deleting. He's all the deleting files. all their files, all their he's got all their pictures. He downloads all the files of the names they have, have got in their scam list. You know, so he can get a hold of those people. He helps the FBI a lot with this stuff. I mean, this is a guy who's an ultimately, I think he's a good hacker. Yeah. And and could make your life a living hell, but instead he's making their lives a living hell. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's it's worth that's worth watching. That could be a TV series. I'd it's watch. a superpower. It's a superpower. Exactly. So how you been doing, Shecky? You're a little quiet today. I got nothing. You got, you got nothing? I tried getting no. a call today and you weren't home. I was at the library. You were at the library? Wow. Who goes to the library anymore? So you don't pay 30 bucks to Amazon for a book that you're going to read once and then put in the basement. Oh, okay. So you just take it out of the out of the library. And they'll buy a book for you. Oh, is that right? You oh. go, you go to the, there's a certain site that's kind of buried where you say, would you buy the Alex Bennett autobiography, let's say. <laughs> and then they let and you they'll tell you they when know they got it. They know we will pick it up. No, yeah, no. <laughs> and they let you know when it's come in. Yep. Wow. Wow. Well, maybe I should go back to the li library. <laughs> like there's a like, graphic novel on Batman that's like 30 bucks I got it from the library read yeah. it, dropped it off today that's yeah. it yeah, how many days How many days do they give you now? two weeks unlimited oh is that right really? what? You mean there's, well, you... there are no late fees anymore Yeah. so you could hold on to that for the next 10 years in theory so what are they I doing? Guess. Is it kind of like an honor system? I guess. Here. There's the no free public, library, the free public library here has eliminated all fees, but they do have one thing. My wife likes to request certain books to put on reserve. And mm -hmm. they have now decided that she cannot put anything else on reserve until she returns the books that she holds. Oh, them. I see. <laughs> These privileges. Well, we don't seem to have that in Queens. Yeah. <laughs> when I when I cleaned out my dad's stuff when he passed away, I found a library book from the New York Public Library checked out in the 1950s. So they have that little <laughs> card in the back. It with did. The date. It, it did. Yeah. It was like January 1955 or something. Like that. So when you when you turned it back in, all you owed them was five thousand dollars. A nickel a nickel a day times sixty years, yeah, something like that. <laughs> There's a Seinfeld episode like that. Right? There yeah. is. Well, it's, it's about the about the uh, what do you call it? The uh, library detective. Library cop, yeah. Library cop. <laughs> you think you can? I do. I do try to read the book within the three weeks. That's the initial checkout period. Mm. 30 weeks? Three no, weeks. three weeks. Oh, three weeks. Oh, okay. All right. And, and you're, then you can renew it two times. That's good. You're a pretty fast reader, too. You read a lot of books. Yeah, I just finished a book on the death of Caesar. <laughs> that went back to the library today. Really? Rather than going into the basement. How's he feeling now? <laughs> well, not good. Not good. <laughs> uh, he isn't doing well. Well, I uh, let's see here. What was the last book I read? A long time mm -hmm. ago. No, I read a couple of Sinatra books, and I but, the, but then the book I did finish is a big, thick volume on Prohibition, uh, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, but uh, I, Marjorie's the reader in the family. She, you've always got a book you're reading, right, Marjorie? Always. And you and. and Two yeah. on the list, ready to go. And you buy them, right? You buy them from Amazon? I do Kindle, yeah. You, you do Kindle? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
But yeah, I have Kindle Unlimited if I want to get it that way. Yeah. Oh, really? What's it, how much does that cost? Eight ninety nine a month, I think, or something like that. Oh, really? Wow. That's yeah. If you're a reader, that's it. You know, I've never been a big big reader, and I I I think that just had to do with my upbringing. You know, I just never had a reason to uh, to absorb books in great detail. I know Marjorie reads. She's as, as much a reader as you are, Shecky. I mean, she's yeah, she's but always, I'm a slow reader. Yeah, but I'm a very slow but nevertheless, reader. you're both chewing. Both of you are chewing on a book, right? You're probably chewing on a book right now, right, Rick? Yeah, I'm reading one on. It's called um, "Styling the Stars," and oh. it's all pictures from 20th Century Fox from their photo archives of costume tests. And things. Oh, okay. Is there, is there, is there all, it's not just pictures, right? It's, no, it's all pictures. Oh, it's all pictures. Oh, well, I can get into that. So it'll be Marlon Brando, let's say the Young Lions, or it would be, you know, pick, pick yeah. a name. Yeah. And it would but, be their cost, you know, it would be when they were their costume tests. Well, so what, what was the, what was the latest book you were reading that had words was the Caesar. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> well, the Caesar book I finished this morning. Yeah. Now let's see. Yeah. Because I want to get it back to the library. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That's one of the library. Well, what Here's what you... Pam's reading. Link. Wait, wait. Lincoln Highway. Lincoln Highway. The road. Yeah. I saw something on that today. I think on YouTube. I read her other books. But on YouTube, I saw something about the Lincoln Highway. Period. Yeah. Which one? This... Yeah, it's, it's, it talks about the gentleman from Moscow. That is fabulous. This? Yeah, I read that. What, is, it, is it a novel? In Moscow. Yeah, it's fiction. Hi, guys. It's fiction. Hi, yeah. how you Hi. doing? This one's really good. A gentleman well, welcome, from welcome Moscow. Welcome to Alex oh, Bennett's book it. club. I just love <laughs> it. Yes, <Great. Guess> Oprah. <laughs> did you read that, Marjorie? Yes, I did. I loved it. Oh, my it. gosh. It was my yeah. favorite. I loved it. Right. Yeah, so this one's good. I, I don't I know. Don't I'm not like reading through. a road trip book, but I read his other one. Yeah, the gentleman, a gentleman from Moscow, I thought was just so loved creative. Loved it. Loved Fabulous. it. it was yeah, just great. Yeah. 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 Then the other ro ro book that I read is really crazy. Have you heard of Cloud Cuckoo Land? That was wackadoodle great. I've heard of that. For some it's reason. really good. It's based on it's it's three stories at once. One is like the siege of Constantinople, and when was that? Like 400 or 1200 or something? Yeah. One takes place now, and one takes place in the future. And it's all centered around a, a, a real life, I don't know, like old Greek story, I think, that they found like a fragment of it or something. It's, it's crazy. It's good. It, it's it really good. good. I, I thought it was a really good novel. It was really there good. There we go, right? I thought it was fabulous. Yeah, really yeah. Boy, we got a bunch of readers here today. Good. All right, I'm it off to make like it. Would, it seemed like it would be a difficult book, but it wasn't. It was like a page turner. You couldn't, you couldn't stop I reading. loved it. That's fabulous. Well, most books I'm just to... grateful we had Wackadoodle mentioned on this show today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, anyway, uh, let me see here. What? So anything interesting happening downtown, Steve? No. No. <laughs> no. Um, you know, I don't. I, every, every time I walk around, there seem to be more places that are closed and shuttered. So yeah. sad. New yeah. York is closing down. Yeah, everywhere. I need to tell my daughter this, so she won't move there. <laughs> Even though I, I don't mind her moving there, but the whole family is just in distress that my 22 year old daughter is going to move to New York. Yeah, that's um, I. Well, yeah, I mean, I love. I obviously love New York, but you know, the homelessness is out of control. Then I hope the she. Violence? I hope she's making a lot of money if she's moving here. That's the thing. She's not really. She doesn't really have a plan yet. This will be in the mm -hmm. fall, so you know. Yes. Yeah. Rents are out of control. Right? Rents have never been higher. Yeah. But, with Alex, except <laughs> except that, except with Marjorie's tenants because she's so nice to them. She doesn't have the heart to raise the rent. <laughs> Boy, are yeah, you a good landlord? I wish I had you. Well, I kind of do have you 
says the guy who's paying five hundred dollars a month from this apartment. But Isn't it five hundred and seven cents? It's five hundred dollars and seven cents. And no. you know, I can go the five hundred, Marjorie, but you're going to have to spot me this seven cents. <laughs> seven cents is a deal breaker. Yeah, that's yeah. a deal breaker. <laughs> I don't know. Still don't have a lease. I don't know where the where. Oh, look who showed up! Oh boy, putting this oh, uh, thirteen people now. Wow, up. here comes Brian. Oh, oh, what's his name? Brian. Oh, see, Brian. It, Mandy is what's her name, and Brian is what's his name. Hello, Brian. I don't think he's he hasn't connected. Okay, connect. Hey, Brian. Oh, hello, Brian. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Are you are you uh, driving? Ooh. Yes. No. Yes, I'm driving. You're driving. <laughs> are you in? No, wait a minute. Are you in Europe? No, I bet he. Uh, can, let me see. I'm gonna use my ESP. Are you in your Tesla? No. You're in no. your yeah. my Cadillac. Yeah. You're you're my daily ca driver. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. But it's so quiet. I thought it was the Tesla. Mm. No. Candy. Oh, yeah. that's my Cadillac. Hey, oh, you it's guys. Cadillac. You guys are falling for his ploy. Like, see, he always calls in after every, we've all started talking so he can get all the attention. Right. <laughs> hey, wow. <laughs> what are you doing? Mm. Hey, right. why do you take my stuff? No, that's what I do at the car shows, too. I get there a little bit late, and I park right in the middle of everybody. And they're all like, how do you get this good parking? I said, because I come late. <laughs> right. <laughs> are you getting ready to drive by my house here or what? Uh, about about forty five minutes, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Now uh, you're going. You're going to your. You're going out of town next week, right? Yeah, next week go to Sweden. Yeah. So going I don't Sweden. even know what. Yeah, I don't even know what time it's going to be, but I'm going to try to. I'll, I'll wake up and say hi. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. And I'll do. I'll do like about twenty five minutes right. after. Yeah. Like so, <laughs> so, so I get all the attention. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> huh? Wait, we lost That's why Mandy, Mandy does the same thing. <laughs> I don't. I call her very promptly now. She's very oh, okay. Okay. She's very, I, I just I just got off work, so yeah, she's very prompt. You know. Uh, I have to call. You have to call. <laughs> yeah, but we but Marjorie, we miss you on Friday nights. I didn't even get the chance yeah. to be. I wasn't on Friday night yet when you were on there. You already sort of boycotted. But yeah, I missed the little half hour with yeah, you. She doesn't. Like, she didn't do the nighttime show anymore. I, she's I, asleep I, by then. Yeah, she's that's asleep. what I. Yeah. Okay. Well, now that she's retiring, though, she should be able to do that. That's oh right. yeah, you. Do. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> but no, exactly. every, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Every day. At about nine o'clock in the morning or ten o'clock in the morning, she has a doctor's appointment every <laughs> single day. My checkups. No, but during the club. today it was the shot in the knee, and yesterday were you at the doctor's? Today is Monday, Alex. Oh, today is Monday. I was with you. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, and people Dr. are asking, Alex. well, how's this thing working out where she's not working now? You know, it's, it's not fun. <laughs> it's, you go for romantic walks in the park. How yeah. romantic is that? Well, right. if you consider her walking and me wheezing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I went and got my uh, second uh, shot, uh, second booster on Friday. So that was good. Yeah. Right yeah. down the street at their library. And they were giving you a 50 buck gift card if you do it. I'm like, okay. Really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> To so what? Library, I'm stopping by now. Just a, visa. <laughs> Just a visa gift card. Good for anything. Oh, visa? So yeah, it's not yeah. cash? Yeah. yeah, no, I got, I. we went, Marjorie went up and said, they were giving out these uh, COVID tests. They wanted you to do the swab, right? And then they gave me a $50 gift card. Yeah. Visa gift card. And so I went up, I did the same thing. I got a $50 visa uh, gift card. Which ended up being $35, by the way. Why? And that's what it ended up being. Who knows? Well, I, uh, I, I know that I tried to do more than 30, I think, and it, it spit back 20. I don't know what that was about. I still got the card, so I can still use it. 
But I, I just wonder, should we be actually giving away prizes like this for people some, doing something that's good for them? They don't do that in Texas. They don't do it in Texas. <laughs> just like the, um, the, air, the airlines, you know, just getting ready the mask mandate right in the middle of flight. During a flight, I know. <laughs> back, I went on a trip this past week and she said, why did they wait? Like, can she was she was like right. against and they should still have it. And I said, well, you can still wear a mask. But she even said, oh, I wish they wouldn't have gotten rid of it right before I'm taking a this is the first plane ride she's gone on since COVID. Yeah, so, well, I, I don't know if I'm willing, you know, if I'm willing to take the chance. OK, in an airplane. Uh, Shecky, you're going on uh, some trips later this year. Are you going to uh, wear a mask on the plane or on the boat or on the train? Part of the time. Part of the time. What part? I don't think I'm going to spend eight hours with a mask on, but I will get on the plane with the mask, sit down, look who's around me, and make a decision. Yeah, my long stretch is 10 hours. Yeah. To Sweden, to Sweden, and I'm probably going to at least get on with a mask and, like Shecky says, sort of make my decision where I'm sitting. And are you, are you going like that. direct from SFO on Swiss Air or something? No, I'm doing uh, out of San Jose. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Charlie. Let's let's check up here for everybody. What's the current death count today or yesterday or whatever? Nine hundred ninety-one thousand six hundred sixty-two. Oh, I thought it reached wow. a million. No, no, we're no, we've slowed down quite a bit. Uh, there are that. Republicans out there really working on it, Marjorie. So don't <laughs> don't. It's going to happen, okay. And when they do, we can then all say we're number one. We're number one. There are no more any Republicans. <laughs> they just kind of disappeared. They're all dead. They're all dead. Yeah. yeah. That is true. That is true. There is no more Republican Party. It's all the Trump Party. Yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Yeah. Anyway, let's not get into that. See, they're, all, they're all rhinos. The but that's the third name time only. that name has been said today. Mm. You know, if we say it one more time, the screen melts. <laughs> I have to say that he I comes saw... back to life. You say his name three times, he comes back to life. Oh, yeah, it's like Beetlejuice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what were you saying? Were you saying, Mandy? I just saw a funny clip of Jimmy Kimmel. Like, he found an old clip of Trump from this summer where he was talking about a dictator in Korea was going to pay us $5 billion. Because he said, since I didn't win the election, that like it was, he was like in a meeting, somebody was. Oh, yes. He actually him. admitted to not yeah. winning the election. And so he kept, Jimmy Kimmel kept playing. He said, let's play that again. He's like, since I didn't <laughs> yeah. win the election. I heard that. He's like, yeah. One more time for the people in the back. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is funny because it's yeah. like he says it. It's like, ah, well, because in, the, he, the statement he made had something to do with the fact that he said that uh, South Korea owed America a billion dollars or something. Like five billion a year. But now America. that I didn't win the election, they won't have to pay it off. And it, oh. it, 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 he's never admitted to that, you know. Right. So it was I was like, yeah. <laughs> and he kept playing it over and over and yep. over. Oh boy. Well kind of like that recording of McCarthy yeah. too. It didn't it mm -hmm. didn't really happen, even though it's recorded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how's everybody doing on the stock market, by the way? Uh, 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 I saw it. I looked at it. I looked at it yesterday and I didn't know that on Friday it went down almost a thousand points. No. Oh. I went, what the hell's happening? And it wasn't like it was on the news or anything. I didn't see it anywhere with people saying, but Boy, then last it. Wednesday it was up 500 points. So it's right. just it's like you just ignore this. Oh, okay. Okay. So it went down after going up 500. Okay. All right. Well, um, who knows? I don't know. Because over time, it's historically up. I mean, sure. this is what broker tells me. So don't take your money out the pan. Well, no, yeah. Yeah. no, just, just, just don't look. Yeah. Only look at one eye. So this is the business oh, I'm in. Um, 
and I, I, I want to make sure I'm not giving advice here. I'm just giving general whatever. I don't want to get my license. This is your disclaimer that you're supposed to put on Thank every you. one of your Thank, letters. There it is. Done. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Disclaimed. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at the index chart, like money's very emotional. Um, and, and people are saying I've made or I've lost. You haven't made any money or lost any money until you actually oh. sell. So oh. you're either yes. up or down. Right. And then you say to them, okay, you're down right now. Is that the time to sell? No. no. Now's the time to buy. Do you have an extra 50 bucks a month under your cushions that you can throw in? It's down yep. right now. And then you show them the index chart back from 1929 and you see, okay, when it goes back up, but it's very emotional. So there's a whole series of psychology and in, in, in helping people deal with the emotional turmoil of the ups and downs. Well, then I'll and keep- And there's a lot uh, of money on the sidelines yeah. waiting to get in. Sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, 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 well, I, I'll tell you right now that I'm holding onto my CNN plus stock. <laughs> not getting rid of it i figure if i hold on to it long enough it'll come back it'll come back it'll come back as uh something how many else. of you felt a certain joy in the fact that cnn plus folded after two was two weeks two three weeks, weeks i think Oof. I, i've no, got to be I'm honest i didn't even know about it well i mean i kind of i kind of like cnn i mean in that you know i find they're on my side a lot right. you know and uh Chris I, Wallace I, went over there. No, yeah, Chris Wallace went over there. Katie okay. Turr from MSNBC. I no, not Katie no. Turr. Uh, Casey Hunt. Casey Hunt. Hunt. Or, or as I put it, uh, I, I'd like to go up to her and go, "How you doing, Casey?" Hasey. Hasey. Excuse me. See, I just blew my own joke. How you doing, yeah, Hasey? Yeah. Uh, but she, um, uh, she, I think, I don't think she went over there without some kind of golden parachute on a deal. You know, I mean, why would you go over there unless you had a guarantee? Oh, these people are going to be fine. Right. No, it probably. I mean, Chris Wallace will be. I think they'll hold on to him, to tell you the truth. Oh, he'll get the nine o'clock show. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and he's probably happy as hell to be out of Fox. Yes, mm -hmm. because I'm sure he was tired of going to parties and having people say, "What you work for Fox? How can you keep working for Fox?" You know. Well, my father was a whore and sold soap on TV, so I can do the same thing. Remember those days, Shecky? Yeah. Mike Wallace was on the Colgate Comedy Hour selling soap. Yep. Really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For years. Early fifties. Early fifties. He was an actor. Walter Cronkite too. ever uh, ever do that? No, no. Uh, he just worked with puppets. You, you, you see, in the <laughs> beginning, Mike Wallace was just a radio, a, a TV announcer. He was they, an announcer. Okay. Yeah. And then he got the um, whatever that show. I want to call it Open End, but that was well, what he did it. was I think the first show he did was uh, well, he did do uh, biography. Yeah. Well, that was later. He was also did. He, he also that was later. Yeah, but he also did what was that other show? It was the remember. one where he just attacked people, <laughs> his oh. guests. Oh, 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 Nightbeat. Nightbeat. Nightbeat oh, was, on, right. was on ABC. <gasps> and the joke was the joke they constantly told about Mike Wallace's style was well, here we have so and so. He's won the, uh, the uh, Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, he's a five time winner of this. He is, is, did that. He's you know, did all these things for human humanity and blah, 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 blah. So when was it you first became a communist? <laughs> yeah. That was his style. And he did this very confrontational interview. Yes. And he, after that, couldn't get work anywhere. So he went over and he did the biographies. That's what he did. Yeah, it was biography. It was like 1960. Yeah. And then after that ran a while, it kind of cleansed everybody's palate to the old Mike Wallace. And so CBS said, you want to come do 60 minutes? Wow. That's really what happened. He was very lucky because his career was over after that night beat show. Hmm. I love hearing this shit. Like this is the, I love when you guys talk about this stuff. I had no idea. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 Oh, he, he never had a rep as a newsman to tell you the truth. But he took that style from Nightbeat and applied it to 60 Minutes. And then, well, you know, you got that old joke about, you know, how do you know you're having a bad day when somebody says, Mike Wallace is here from 60 Minutes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Because, boy, talk about a lesson in showing how you can reinvent yourself if that's where he was and what he became. Because mm-hmm. he's revered now in so many no, ways. He's not revered. No, he's not. I'm saying Gen X looks at him like, okay, yeah. this is a gold standard for a newsman. Well, compared to what we've got today. Right. Yeah. Well, there you go, too. Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, Sean Hannity, come on. I'd take uh, Mike Wallace any day of the week. You know, back to the, I've, I've been knee deep in Letterman stuff. And, and one of my favorite guests of all time was Brian Williams. <laughs> and and whenever Brian would come on, and I know it was a little bit of shtick, I get that, but how Dave would ask, ask him to make an opinion. And the big joke was that Brian wouldn't make an opinion on anything because that was the standard of a newsman. Well, that was not yeah, that didn't. long ago. You that was like right. just over a decade ago. Well, they don't. They didn't know their political party either. They don't right. say that a lot of those people on uh, on Fox or even on MSNBC at night are uh, news reporters. They're considered commentators. Yeah, and mm-hmm. that's different. Okay, yeah. as a commentator, you can have an opinion and say what you want to say, and you know, do what you want to do. Uh, as a news person, that's a different story altogether. You have a different set of responsibilities, one of which is to be unbiased. And that guy who does the news at 630 is supposed to at least, I'm sure, he, you know, you have a pull, you're either left or right. You, you know, you're going to fall one way or the other. But when you're on the air, nobody knows the difference. Nobody knew for years where Walter Cronkite stood. That's right. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and they often felt that that gave you your credibility. And that's why it was such a big deal when when Cronkite spoke against Vietnam. That was a huge leap for him. That's right. Yeah. And when and when Johnson said, "If I don't have Cronkite, I'm not going to lost America." And that's why he decided not to rerun. Exactly. For president. So, Uh who's the best newsman or newswoman out there now? If we were to put that uh, that set of standards over us, that filter over me. Judy yeah. Woodruff. <laughs> I was say, but you know, Judy Woodruff, Judy Woodruff on the PBS News Hour is the only really deep hour-long objective newscast that I know of. Mm, could yes. be, yeah. You could, you could be right. I, I well, well, you know, the, the people who do the six thirty try to remain as objective as possible. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, but they're news readers. Right. Mm-hmm. And, they're, and they're, you know, working for yeah. corporations that take a lot of big, lot of advertising money. So what, I always, yeah. what I what I always loved about the BBC is when I first went over to England and I turned it on and there was a newscast and it would start off. Hello, this is the news and I am so and so reading it. Uh, I went, huh. OK, OK, that, that's 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 a truthful assessment yeah. of what you do. for. Well, that's what I'm saying. News reader. Right. That profession was news reader. more or less. Yeah. Yeah. But guys like Brokaw or Rather or Williams, uh, Diane Sawyer, they were news people, though. They didn't just read the news, though. Yeah. Brokaw actually wrote all his news. He wrote. I remember. What's his name? Uh, You were mentioning him earlier. Uh, Brian Williams. Brian Williams. I think where he got in trouble was on you on your show. Right, Rick? That's where he talked about the story about, you know, I think he told that story on our show. Yeah, yeah, he did. did. And and that that was what got him in trouble because he claimed that he, you know, been in a plane and they were strafed by weapons and things like something in Saudi Arabia or somewhere. And and I believe it's because he told the story on Letterman that they said that he was trying to do what he, he considered a funny story. So he embellished it. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, 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 he's no longer at MSNBC, by the way. He got up. He, he retired he this retired. year. Yeah. 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 Um, what do you watch for news? Uh, 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 mm-hmm. <laughs> <God>. Andy? <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> watch times, but I, I watch... I mean, if I'm going to watch news, I'll watch MSNBC or NPR is what I read. Yeah, yeah. Look at their website. NPR tries to be somewhat neutral, you know. Yeah. It, you know, it was years ago when Turner started as CNN. He said the reason he started it was he was tired of turning on the CBS Evening News and watching Dan rather like look down his nose at certain stories or do it with a certain attitude. Yeah, and he said I wanted to start a network where we didn't have an attitude. We just reported the news. 
I mean, the days have gone from that, but that's why he started it. And that was its original mission. Um, And I remember when I saw them sign on for the first time. And uh, I remember it specifically because the person who was there hosting the first show, I can't remember who it was, said, this is CNN signing on for the last time. Huh? Well, think about hmm. it. Have they ever signed off? Ah, that's really funny. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. But that was the first thing that came out of his mouth. We're signing on for the last time. Yeah. Hey, really? listen, we've kind of run out of time here. Uh, Already? Jeez, so fast. Yeah, I did. <laughs> when, you get, when you get here late, you know, I mean, and when you get here late, it goes by so fast. <laughs> you know. When you're when you're uh, uh, Edward Berger, it's a different That's story. right, a, a different story. Tell him. That's Edward. right. <laughs> you would right, put, right right now. Want me to do it, or you want to do no, it? No, no, no. Don't do it yet. They, oh, they, okay. You sign off that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Boy. Take two. <laughs> Marjorie, thank you so much for joining us. Anytime. Uh, yeah. Uh, come on over to the place and say hello. Uh, <laughs> Mandy, so nice to have you here as well. Mike, always a pleasure. Uh, Len LaFrisco, you and your wallpaper. That's that's actually the nice version of Tony's wallpaper. <laughs> um, I'm going to rip this off the wall and send it to you. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we don't have any wallpaper in this apartment at all. No, you, you don't like wallpaper, do you? Nobody uses wallpaper anymore. No. Uh, no. It depends. It depends. Sometimes it can be yeah. nice, but it can be know. beautiful, but, but, but not now. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how bubble wrap. That's how bubble wrap was invented. Steve Ender, yeah. my best to you and your lovely Frau. Uh, no. And uh, we will enjoy wow. seeing you eventually. Yes. Well, Huh? You will. You oh, will. okay. Well, and and Jeff Stein, you guys should get down here, Jeffrey. Yes. Absolutely. You, know, you should come down. We should have a little lunch. My uh, my sister just went back to Atlanta. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we're uh, able to talk to a couple of people now. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Yeah, good. Scott Boddicker, Gosh, hasn't said a word all show, but uh, <laughs> just say something, Scott. Something, Scott. Oh, okay. I, I think he chimed in on the on the execution being yeah. stopped. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Wallace lives right down the road from Scott yeah. Modiker. By the way, Scott is in Plano, Texas, and you know what the home of what it's the home of in Plano, Snapple. Texas, Snapple. Snapple. It's the home Ooh. of Snapple. Yeah. And uh, 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 Charlie, thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. And we also New home of Tesla. What? Yeah. Austin's the new home of Tesla. Wow. What town is? Austin, Austin. Texas. Austin, Austin is the new home of Tesla. Yeah, he moved out yeah. of California. He didn't like the way they were treating yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, and he moved all his rockets to Texas, too. <laughs> Vernon Nunn, thank you so much. Always a pleasure to have you here. Shecky, you know I love having you here. You round out the show very nicely and it's the only one you've ever called regularly on my little thing so i'm i'm i consider it uh, a pleasure and an honor and of course there's always what's his name oh, <laughs> brian uh, the former home of tesla the, the former. <laughs> where where was tesla it was down there it was at fremont it's yeah, fremont right. Yeah, Raymond, and, and then they did right actually right over here, in Lathrop. Lathrop, they still have a big factory over here. Okay, but the, the the factory they took over was another car company, wasn't it? Yeah, Numi. That was Numi, the Numi plant. Yeah, Toyota. Yeah, which Toyota. used to, which used to be Chevy before that or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, and uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, th- thank you so much, Brian. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey thanks to all of you let's do it again next week nice big crowd here today of about uh let me see here about uh, 13 people if you include me wave goodbye everybody we'll see you later thank you so much. Bye. bye everybody okay. oh, wait, wait, wait.
Edward. 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 Oh, now you want me to do it. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. I forgot. Take three. Take three. I forgot. <laughs> I'm an old fart, okay? <laughs> yes. And finally, Edward Berger signs us off by saying, that's all, folks. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Hey. hey, thank you for reminding me, people. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm trying to remember who I am. Bye. <laughs>